Hi, and welcome back to this Wednesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. You are listening to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on Conservative Talk Radio. I am your congenial, convivial, uh, amiable, and today energized host, uh, Brian Fisher. Great to have you in the uh, conversation. And honored and pleased to welcome to our Decision Maker line someone who's been a frequent guest on Focal Point, Gina Loudon. She is the host of the Dr. Gina Show on the radio. Gina, welcome back to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Brian, it's always an honor to be with you. Gina, before we get into what we want to talk about, tell us how people can listen to your program and where they can go for more information about you. Oh, it's really easy. They can go to DocGTV.com. That's DocGTV.com. And uh, they can listen to the show there. They can find my book there. And they can see about all of my latest escapades, not the least of which, Brian, is I, j- I did the John Stewart Daily a uh, little bit vile, a little bit profane show uh, in an effort to reach some low information voters. It always is ma- amazes me how yeah. uh, how how audiences uh, actually flock to shows like that, but they do. And we have to reach them for our side too. And I've been getting some great feedback on that. So cool uh, if people can well, handle it, that post is up there. Well, Gina, I think we've got about just a brief six, 15, 20 second clip from your appearance on the John Stewart show. Jeff, let's run that. Obamacare is bad for America. Obamacare is more like Obama doesn't care. <laughs> See, you were so much better than them at reducing complicated ideas into meaningless phrases. Well, as we like to say in the conservative movement, we can explain it to you. We just can't understand it for you. Well, that's very condescending. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good, Gina. So you uh, gave as good as you got. Well, you know, you go in the John Stewart studio. I mean, you're, you're, you're not talking to low information voters. You are talking to no information voters. <laughs> okay, Brian, I was trying to be generous here. <laughs> but well, yeah, you know, no, it really is. You, you, you nailed it. I mean, the, the hate mail you get is, is uh, only complimented by people going, wow, I thought all conservatives were mean and hateful. You, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You don't fit the description. And I think, wow, have you really never met another conservative in your life? Crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. And speaking of the, the low to no information, I saw a Gallup poll result this morning that 69% of the people in the 18 to 29-year-old age group, which is the group that President Obama has to count on to fund Obamacare, he's got to take money out of their pockets and give it to senior citizens. So it's this massive redistribution of wealth from the young and the poor to the old and the affluent. And 69% of those who are between the ages of 18 and 29, they do not even know that they are required to buy insurance by January 1. They're completely clueless, so this flaming train wreck is bearing down on them, and they've got no idea that they're tied to the tracks and about to get cut in half. And yet, if you look at their supposed news sources in the lamestream media, you will see that all they're talking about are these shutdowns, these these essential federal employees that aren't there. And, oh, children and old ladies are going to die because of what the Republicans have done in shutting down the government. And you and I know this is a fable. This is a case of Chicken Little. The sky is falling. We, we all had that read to us when we were children. We've read it to our children. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, What I don't understand, Brian, is why the general public still takes them seriously because obviously business is carrying on as usual without this massive outlay of cash to pay a bunch of unnecessary federal employees. This is beautiful. I wish we could keep it like this. Well, and there's one congressman, I can't remember who it is now, but it was was, uh, Tim Hulescamp, Kansas. He says, my district loves the shutdown. They love to see government spending slimmed down, even if just slightly. I mean, you add everybody up, you still got 80% of everybody that's on the federal payroll. When you count postal service, you count active duty military, you count everybody else. 80% of the federal workforce is showing up for work today. So it's not this catastrophic shutdown that everybody said it was going to be. Uh, apparently not. It's really funny to listen to them kind of trip. If you can watch it with a critical eye, it can be comedic. And I love to laugh at what's going on because we don't get a lot of opportunity to do that, as you know. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to watch them say these these non-essential but so essential federal employees, like you might have tainted food now because some person labeled non-essential isn't at work today. Now, there are uh, food inspectors that are essential there, and we don't really know why some are labeled essential and non-essential. Um, maybe because they're not essential. I'm just <laughs> thinking. Well, you just know, trying to reason. And see, that that's the thing that just cracks me up, Gina, because, you know, all we want are essential workers in the federal workforce. If somebody's doing a job 
that's non-essential, the question you and I would ask and the Tea Party would ask, if their role, even Barack Obama can recognize that their role is non-essential, what are they doing on the federal payroll? That's the question. Oh, Brian, you, you're so reasonable. Would you not be such a hateful conservative? <laughs> no, you're exactly right, Brian. And that's why this whole thing, uh, it can almost be comedic. But I'll tell you what's not funny. And that is the fact that conservatives have absolutely got to label this what it is. We have got to be out there in social media. And I know so many conservatives, Brian, we just, we abhor social media. We really don't like it. It's like a big, it's like, it reminds us of the bathroom graffiti when we were growing up and going to junior high. That's kind of how social media feels, but we have got to be out there delivering a message. You're out there every day on your show, Brian, um, but your listeners, I, I'm really going to call on them that if they're not on social media, get on social media just for this little stint and help conservatives deliver the message that this shutdown is actually more like a touchdown that our government can exist without this massive bloated federal bureaucracy. And this is proof and point why we need a limited small government and why we don't need this bloated, expensive, massive uh, expansion of government. And of course, Obama doesn't care, as I like to call it. Now, let me run a theory by you. I've had the theory that because of social media, because of alternative media, because of conservative talk radio, like the one that you do, like what we're doing right here, right. that the landscape has changed from 1996 and Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama don't recognize it. They're still operating under the template that was in place in 1996 where the only voices that were shaping public perception were the, the three major networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. Well, that's not true right. anymore. You've got social media, you've got Twitter, you've got conservative talk radio, you've got a host of conservative websites, and they do not understand that the ground has shifted beneath their feet. And I was looking at that poll, uh, that the Pew poll that indicated 39% of the public blames the Republicans for the shutdown, 36% blamed the Democrats. In 1996, it was like 46-27, almost 2 to 1. They blamed Republicans instead of Clinton. So I think the ground has shifted because of things like you're talking about. And I'm not sure the Democrats have awakened to the reality that they no longer have a monopolistic control over the yeah. way people process what's happening. And I think your listeners should know, because I know you don't pat your own back enough, that the work that you and Jeff and AFR do uh, is so, so critical and in delivering that message and being a huge part of that voice. And it has so much impact. And your listeners go out there and they go to the grocery store and they go to the beauty shop and they go to the gas station and they talk about these things and they have the talking points because you've prepared them. So I want to personally thank you and your team for that. But I also want to say this. One of the statistics that I think is the most telling in this whole thing, do you know the statistic, Brian, of how many federal bureaucrats plan to opt in to Obamacare? Do you know that statistic? <laughs> well, I saw the poll where 93% of them said we don't want anything to do with Obamacare. You may have some other information. Clue us in. The latest poll, and I believe it's a CBS poll, I may be mistaken on that, 2.9%. I know I cited it in my latest uh, World Net Daily opinion column, so people can check whatever my source was there. But yeah, it's 2.9%. I was generous and called it uh, 3%. But you know, 3% uh, of the people responsible for instituting and delivering to you this wonderful pie in the sky, everything's going to be bananas and berries now program. 3% want anything to do with it. Brian, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science here to do that math, does it? Well, and you you figure that the Republicans in the House sent over to the Senate, I mean, their fourth iteration of some bill to try to find some common right. ground with Democrats, they sent a bill over to them that would remove the exemption that Congress and their staff have right now. They'll get a waiver from Obamacare that mm -hmm. you don't get, that I don't get, that the American people don't get. It's absolutely uh, unconscionable. It's unjust. We believe in equality before the law, and we don't have that right now with Obamacare because Congress and all our staff, they get a break that you and I don't get. And the Senate voted to keep that exemption for themselves. The Democrats in the Senate voted to keep that exemption for themselves. But, Brian, they're for the little guy. You know that, Brian, because they told you that. So why would you go and say such a mean thing? You're just like the rest of the mean conservatives out there, Brian, if you believe that, because they told you themselves they're for the little guy. They love the American people, and conservatives hate the American people. And it's just, it's all very clear, isn't it? One last question, Gina, before I let you go. Uh, American Family Studios, our, our film division, is doing a documentary on religious liberty and yes. the danger that 
we're currently in with regard to our religious liberty. And, and our documentary team approached you and did an interview with you for that document, uh, for that documentary. So tell us just a little bit about what you emphasized. We only got a couple of minutes, but what did you emphasize in what you shared with our documentary team? I just, you know, I find the hypocrisy amazing, Brian, that, that, that I just laid out in my last comment to you. you no, know, the things that they say versus the things that they do. And and if you watch the way that the, the whole situation with Christians billing, being killed overseas by terrorists, by the way, again and again, they never mention that they're Christians. And then I always wonder about this. And this is what I said in the documentary uh, portion that they taped. I said, you know, what if it had been a, a gay pride rally? where people had been killed? What if it had been a, an Islamic mosque? Would the news be delivering this story any differently? Hundreds of Christians die every week sitting in churches for the fact that they are Christians and sometimes not sitting in churches. And it actually never even makes the mainstream media and sadly, not even enough of our conservative media. How would that be different if it were a gay pride parade or if it were an Islamic mosque? Then you see the hypocrisy and you and I don't even have to say anything. Mm. Well, Gina, I appreciate you taking time to be with us. Our guest has been uh, Dr. Gina Loudon. She's the host of the Dr. Gina program. Encourage you to read her columns on WND.com and other places and take in her radio program. In fact, she's going to be off to do some show prep as soon as we're done chatting here. But Gina, <laughs> appreciate Gina's been a part of the Tea Party from, from Jump Street. She was a uh, part of the, the group that energized the Tea Party in the first place. And uh, Gina, I was telling my, my my listening audience in the last segment that I've got a new name for the conservative movement. Remember that movie Eddie and the Cruisers from the 1980s? Well, because of Ted Cruz, I'm going to call the conservative movement Teddy and the Cruisers. Love and, it! And Gina, I anoint you as the uh, lead female vocalist in Teddy <laughs> and the Cruisers, the conservative band that is going to rock this country. So. Love it. All right, Gina, well, listen, thank you very much for taking time to be with us, and God bless you. God bless you. Dr. Gina Loudon, host of the Dr. Gina program. And by the way, speaking of the wholesale slaughter of Christians, we've sent an action alert out just yesterday on the killing of Christians in the Middle East in Islamic countries and the silence of the White House. So you want to get that action alert, take action. You can send a letter to Barack Obama and John Kerry. Focal Point, AFR Talk.